Hey guys, it's Ben, and this is the third lesson on cryptography. Let's begin. So, so if we just recap from the second lesson, um, we covered in uh, in little detail symmetric encryption, and just to remind you, symmetric encryption is where you have one key which is used for both encryption and decryption. So you'll uh, encrypt your data with this symmetric key, this, this private key, and you would send it to the receiver. The receiver would also have this private key and they would decrypt it. And I showed this with a practical example in Python. I also mentioned symmetric encryption um, is insecure, right? Um, if you're just using symmetric encryption between two people on the internet, right, there is no way of getting, um, sending your key. Um, because you need to have this one key, this shared key, to encrypt and decrypt. If you sent over your um, encrypted data alone, so without any key to your, the receiver, they wouldn't be able to decrypt it. So you'd also need to send over your symmetric key over the network. So now, if anyone's sniffing it, they would be able to, uh, they'd be able to see. Look, we've we've we found this encrypted data, and we've also found this this key, this shared key, and they would be able to decrypt it. So we would have to do some more work to um, be able to have secure communications. So yes, this is what I basically said. Symmetric encryption in more detail. Like I said, it uses one key, and this must be kept secure. Um, the sender and receiver most, but both must be. Uh, they they both must have this key, this secret key, this symmetric key, um, and they must keep it secure. Um, one thing to notice with symmetric encryption: um, the smaller the key, the faster it is. Um, so if you're using a small key you'll be able to encrypt and decrypt your data fast. Um, and if you have a larger key, it's much more secure. So um, another thing to note, symmetric encryption is very useful when you want to encrypt large amounts of data. So you'd be able to encrypt gigabytes and gigabytes of data at a time with symmetric encryption and send it across a network. Um, and I'll, I'll explain that in a a bit more in a second. So the other side of uh, symmetric is asymmetric cryptography and I briefly mentioned this in lesson two and in this area of cryptography you don't have one shared key, you have two keys. Um, you have a so-called public key and a private key. These two keys are just basically mathematically related numbers you could say um, and you arbitrarily choose one of these two numbers which you can generate to be your public key and the public key you can share with the world and the other key is the private key. You want to keep this private key secret, you don't want anyone to see it because if they have the private key they'll be able to decrypt data which is sent to you. So like I said this public key you can send it to the world. If you have a receiver and you want them to send you encrypted data, you would give them your public key. So you would say, look, here's my public key, encrypt data with it and send it to me, right? You can give this public key out, somebody would send you encrypted data, and only you, if this private key is hidden, will be able to decrypt that data. So you can think of the public key as being used for encryption, and the private key is being used for decryption. So the downsides of an asymmetric encryption is it's a lot slower, right? Um, if you give your public key out to encrypt a large, large amount of data, it will be very inefficient. It will take time decrypting or encrypting because um, it is much, much slower than the symmetric encryption. So if you were encrypting a small amount of data and decrypting it, Asymmetric is fine, but uh, it can't be used for the mass of your communications or the data you're sending over a network because it's inefficient. It, it, it's, it's very slow. So 
like I said, the public key is used for encrypting data and the private key is used for decrypting data. Um, using a combination of symmetric and asymmetric cryptography and using them together, we can fix the issue we had with symmetric encryption. And I'm going to go over that now. So once again, just reiterating this, uh, the problems with symmetric encryption when Alice encrypts a message P, so we say we've got this message P she wants to send, and she encrypts it with this secret key K. So this is the shared key that Bob and Alice both know. Um, she encrypts it and sends this message. The problem is Bob would need the secret key K to decrypt the message. If Alice sends it across the network with the secret key K, if there is a um, an adversary, a threat actor, sniffing these communications, they would also see that key. So we need to find a way to keep this secret key secure while it's being sent over the network. So this is how we can fix it. Ready? So before we get onto it, yeah, let's define some notation because um, there's a lot of stuff going on. We've got these two functions, let's say E, and it takes two parameters, S and K. So this is the encrypting function, and S in in this case is the plain text. So when we encrypt data with this notation, we can say, look, we're encrypting S, our plain text data, with um, the key K. And when you encrypt it, you get this S subscript E. So I'll just call this S of e, S E, right? This is the encrypted ciphertext data. Decrypting works in a similar way. Look. You've got this D, D function here, and this takes two parameters, S of E, which is your encrypted data, your ciphertext, and K, for example. Um, and this returns, after decrypting it, um, the plain text S. So I'm going to be using the same notation here for public and private key cryptography, um, but it's just useful to know this for what I'm going to go on to. So we need to create a, a secure key exchange. We want to find a way that, in this example, both Alice and Bob can have this symmetric key Z so they can send large amounts of data over the network and it being secure. They could, they could try to do this with the public and private key, but if you're sending large amounts of data, it's going to be slow and inefficient. So we need to find a fast way that we can send large amounts of data over a network which is secure. So we've got Alice and Bob here, right? And these two uh, rectangle, rectangular boxes on either side is basically the, the store of keys or data they have. So in, in Alice's one, look, she has a public key, and we've, we've called this P subscript A, and she has a private key, which we've called Q sub, subscript A. She's also got a symmetric key Z. So this symmetric key, like I said, is the shared key. We need to get Bob to have this symmetric symmetric key, but we can't just send it over the network as it is because it could be sniffed by an adversary. She also has a secret message S, which for this example is going to be a massive amount of data which can't efficiently um, be used if you would encrypt it with public keys and private keys. So how, how do we do this right? We start off with an exchange of public keys. If you remember with the asymmetric encryption, you have this public and private key. The public key, like I said, can be given out to anyone. So Alice gives Bob her public key. Alice sends over the network her public key PA. And now in Bob's box of keys and data, Bob now has this public key PA. Um, in return, Bob gives Alice PB, right? Bob gives Alice his public key, and we can see they now both have each other's public keys. Having each other's public keys means they can encrypt data using their public key and send it securely. However, as I mentioned before, they can only encrypt a small amount of data if you want it to be efficient. So if Bob has, Alice has Bob's public key, and Alice wants to send Bob a short message, Alice can encrypt it with Bob's public key, right? Alice can, can send the encrypted data and, and Bob can decrypt it with 
his private key. Because public key is used for encryption and private key is used for decryption. So they now both have each other's public keys. They can encrypt small amounts of data and send it over the network without an issue, right? But we want to fix this issue of being able to send large amounts of large amounts of data over the network. And we can only do that if we can get the symmetric key Z to Bob securely, because Alice wants to send this massive message, S. So how can we ensure Bob gets this symmetric key securely? Well, Alice now have Bob, Bob Bob's public key, so Alice can encrypt the symmetric key Z with Bob's public key. So we see this notation here. Uh, so we're encrypting Z, which is the symmetric key, with Bob's public key. And this creates ZE, which in our case is this encrypted symmetric key. The thing is, Bob can only decrypt this because it's encrypted with Bob's public key. Only Bob can decrypt this if his private key is kept secure. So, like I said, Alice encrypts the symmetric key Z with Bob's public key and sends that to him. We can see this encrypted symmetric key is sent to Bob. In this next one here, we can see Bob's got this encrypted symmetric key and he now decrypts it, right? So he uses this decrypt function with his private key to decrypt it to the symmetric key. So at this point, we can see in the boxes of information they have, they both share this symmetric key. They both now have this key, which is used for large amounts of data to be encrypted over a network. We fix that issue of sending um, this, this shared private key, this symmetric key over the network. Okay, so now Alice wants to send um, Bob this secret massive message, right? So she can use this symmetric key now to encrypt the secret message, like so. So Alice encrypts the secret message S with the symmetric key Z and sends that encrypted data SE. So this is the, the secret message encrypted with this symmetric key Z. And this is a large amount of data encrypted and she can send it to Bob now, right? She can send it to Bob without an issue. Bob, because we did that key exchange earlier, he now has this symmetric key in his storage. He can now decrypt this symmetric, uh, sorry, he can decrypt this secret message with this symmetric key, which he got from that key exchange we did earlier. And he can now securely read the secret message S. So yeah, that's it. Um, just to recap, because um, that is, is quite a lot of information. We start off with Alice and Bob. They both swap public keys. Alice then encry uh, encrypts the symmetric key with Bob's public key. Once this has been encrypted, this symmetric key has been encrypted, Alice can send this the symmetric encrypted key over the network. She can send it over the network and it is safe because only Bob can decrypt it. If there was, for example, an adversary, Mallory, watching this whole conversation in between Alice and Bob, Mallory wouldn't be able to get any useful information. She would be able to get the public and private keys, but Mallory wouldn't be able to decrypt the, the encrypted symmetric key because Mallory does not have the private key. And Mallory would be able to... Um, receive the encrypted secret message because she doesn't know this um, symmetric key because she wasn't able to sniff that. Um, however, and uh, that's basically it, we, we can now send, um, because both parties now share this symmetric key and they share it without anyone else being able to find out, they can send large amounts of data at a fast rate in between each other because they they're using symmetric encryption which is fast and it is secure there is a problem with this um, and it's the fact that we, we don't know who we're talking to for sure right 
we could get a message, um, an encrypted message from Mallory, because Mallory, she could sniff, she could intercept the public keys sent between each other. So let's say Mallory, this, this threat actor, intercepted the public key. Mallory could send Alice an encrypted message and they could fool them. So there's one thing we haven't really sorted yet, and that's authentication, authenticity. We can't prove who we are talking to is who they are, and we can't... Um, yeah, that that's it. The, there's a few more things I'm going to go into, not in this uh, presentation. I'll split that up into the next, um, the next presentation, just to make it a bit more manageable. Um, but I think we've covered it all. Hope you've enjoyed.